doing a quick watercolor tutorial on using brush out for simple backgrounds. Um, those of you who watch the channel may have seen this as part of a larger tutorial, but um, I do like to augment with very quick, easy things sometimes. Um, you know, just like a little pop of inspiration during the day. So the materials you're going to need are your image. Now, this is a commission that I received at MechaCon. It was for um, Davy Diggs as um, Lafayette from Hamilton. So you're gonna need your image on watercolor paper. This is fluid watercolor paper, eight inches by eight inches. Um, you're going to want, you don't need, but you're gonna want um, a wax resist crayon. This is just a clear wax crayon, not white, but clear. Clean water and your brush out. And I have my brush out over here in um, little salt cellars to make it easy to apply. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do for a simple background, the way I do them for convention, water, oh, you're also gonna want a spray bottle and probably some uh, paper towels, but you always want paper towels in your studio, as well as um, some brushes. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is do a wax resist outline around your, um, your figure. Once that's finished, you're gonna wanna take your brush and saturate the paper around the figure. And you can go up to the wax, but I don't necessarily recommend going over it unless you want your brush out to activate in these areas. This method of application allows for a more controlled application of brush out. Um, so in some of my prior tutorials, you guys have seen me um, sort of work to maintain, to like push the brush out back and to push my colors forward. With this method, that is less of an issue. So if you want a more controlled illustration, you can use this method. Okay, so our paper is saturated and um, you can look for the reflection of your light off the paper and you really want it to be shiny um, for brush -o to perform its best. So we're going to start with a nice, if I can find one, yellow to sort of imitate a spotlight effect. And then we're going to do violet and gray. And gray brush -o has multiple colors in it. So hopefully this will provide a nice contrast to his rock coat. And you want to allow this to dry. And when you're working with brush -o like this, it can often take a really long time to dry. So I'll check in with you guys. Who knows when, when this is dry. All right, so this is mostly dry and now is a good time to take that spray bottle, aiming away from our figure, activate some of those uh, brush out crystals that maybe didn't get hit or didn't get enough water the first time. You can also go over with um, another shade of brush out if you feel like an area didn't get quite enough color. And if you don't have a, a spray bottle, you can just use a dropper. Now the spray bottle will give you a bit of a, a randomized effect. Let me zoom in. See how even though we were avoiding getting it on the figure, we did get some splatter. That's fine as long as we mostly avoid the face. So we need to let this fully dry before we can use a drafting brush to remove the excess brush -o. All right, guys, so the brush -o on this Lafayette watercolor has dried. So now I'm gonna head on over to the garbage can and use my drafting brush to brush the stray brush -o away. After you do that, you wanna use clean water and a clean brush, preferably a large round so you can work your way in the corners to apply a layer of water 
onto your watercolor. This will basically set the brush out. It'll activate the brush out so you can um, lift it up with a paper towel and it will also set it so it's not going to um, affect further layers of color. See how much yellow we're picking up right there? I'll be able to pick up some of that with the paper towel so it's not going to actually affect his skin if I don't want it to. I might want to go ahead and leave it though since we did talk about using that, the using the yellow brush out to indicate like a, a stage spotlight. So I might actually opt to leave that. See, we're activating some purple. Sometimes this very limited controlled application of brush out is great for just toning something very lightly making it look like it belongs with the background. Now on his hand, that's a little more purple than I really want. So I might go ahead and pick that up. And you wanna let this thoroughly dry before you apply color on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and dab up. Now you can either let it, let it absorb into your paper or you can dab some of it up. It really just depends on how quickly you wanna start working again. If you wanna work as soon as possible, you'll go ahead and dab up some of that water since it is a lot of water to just leave sitting on the paper surface. And the reason you're using um, sort of a heavy hand with your water is because you're basically floating the brush out. You don't want it to um, too light an application will smear it all over the place as you drag your brush across the paper. All right, I hope you enjoyed this knitting tutorial. If you did, please leave a like or um, a question if you have one in the comments below. I'll get to it when I can. Um, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel for even more great art tutorials like this one right here. Um, if you enjoy watercolor or if you're interested in learning how to watercolor, head on over to the blog, metasoup.blogspot.com for my watercolor basic series. It's currently ongoing and it is already full of great information to help you get started watercoloring. I'm Becca Hilburn and I hope we can hang out again really soon. Bye!